what's going on, people, man? Y'all already know what it is, man. This is a Catch the Wave production, man. We all prosper, man, around here, man. You already know what it is. Your boy Don D, man. Don Darnell, man. We represent. And it's your boy Tony Taliban, represent Death to Society, man. Y'all fuck with your boy. Hell yeah, man. This South Jackson here, man. Sykes, man. I used to come out here all the time, man. Just me and my niggas, you know, probably five, six of us. I used to get high as hell right here in this spot. Like, I used to get high as hell right over there. In the next dugout? Yeah, yeah, right down there. I remember, I remember like it was yesterday, man. Somebody was looking out. The police done pulled up across the street. They said, you know, my brother, he got that set. They said, he done <laughs> hide it out one of these holes and shit. You know, I go, I talk to the police officer. This shit, the whole car smoked out. This shit, the dugouts smoked out. This shit, but I guess he was just cool that day. Like, you know, he just, he was like, you know, y'all just need to, you know, go on, get up out of here. It's past curfew. I can't have nobody out here past eight. Like, and he just went about his way. Shit, I'm like, cool. We just finished what we was smoking. We just turned around. I never had no good encounter with no police officer ever in my life. That was the only time. This shit, where an officer just been cool, just, you know, Went turn around and went about his way. And shit, but other than that, you know, it's always been something negative. But, you know, I try to look at the positive, though. That's how you supposed to do it, bro. Always. Now, we're going to start this interview all right, man. We got an artist from Jackson, Mississippi, man. He hot right now. He boiling hot. He got lyrics that touch you mentally, make you think. And he just got some shit going on right now. And I just had to ask my man a couple questions so I better get to know him and as well as you all. What's going on, Tony, man? What's man? How you Shit, man. I'm chilling, man. Got a couple questions for you today, man. Just so the fans can get to know who you are a little bit. And just so I can know who you are yeah. more as an artist and as a person versus the Taliban. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what That's really good. made you start doing music? Man. I was inspired to do music growing up, you know. Yeah. Shit. You know, my folks, they'll be rapping around me sometimes. And see, you know, my pops used to always thought, he used to always take lines from other rappers, man. But I always thought it was him rapping, though, coming up and shit. He would always say, say some shit from, you know, Rakim or L.A. Cool J or something. Yeah. And, you know, back then, we ain't, we ain't even had YouTube. This before YouTube. Niggas just, uh. think, niggas just think YouTube been out forever. And shit, but I ain't know who none of them niggas was. Like, he would just, you know, just say something like, you know, I need money. I used to be a stick up kid, so I think of all the devious things I did. I used to roll up. This is a whole Hello. up, ain't nothing funny stuff. He used to say, ah, oh, that shit, I was just like, you know, in a trance. Like, I'm like, how is this man doing this shit? Like, this shit was just crazy. It was just crazy to me. This shit. But, you know, when I got older, you know, I found out who it was and stuff. But I was always, I always had like an entry for, for music. So those it's bars shit. itself kind of motivated you to actually. Like yeah, he'll recite, in he'll recite some lines. You know, I always thought it was him, but you know. How old were you about when he started doing that? Probably about eight, nine. Okay. Eight or nine. Now, what was your first track that just made you feel like, yeah, this is this is what I want to do with the rest of my life? Yeah. I said, that's the first track I did. The first track I recorded. It's just the feeling of being in the studio. Yeah. The feeling of being in the studio, man. It was, it was magical, man. That shit. We just uh, went in there, you know, first we started, we did a freestyle, it was just, it started off as a cypher and shit, we always just freestyling, and you know, my nigga Vaughn, he freestyled a whole chorus and just made a chorus right then, and uh, then, you the know, head. we thought, off the head, off the dome, uh. and shit, you know, we were like, man, we gotta make a song, we gotta make a song, we gotta put that in the song, and shit, so we, we went ahead, we wrote, like, the next day, and shit, then went to the studio the day after that. Shit, we, we dropped this shit, we recorded, we maybe recorded like two or three songs that night. But uh, we went to this nigga, his name was uh, Tommy Boy. His name was Tommy Boy. And shit, but you know, I, ain't, I don't fuck with the nigga no more. His quality real good, I just don't fuck with him no more, because them boys on that PCP. Oh, shit, they be okay. Smoking, they be smoking that shit while, they, while we be recording and stuff. We ain't know what they was smoking, we thought they were smoking some dope. That's what we was smoking, we had it around the rotation, you know. We, let them hit it. And shit, they blunt came around by the time it came to my nigga. He, like, hold on, what's this? And shit. It smelled, it smelled like, different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It definitely was going to taste different. It tell you, like, they're like, oh, that PCP. We said, what? Mm. We're like, oh, no, nah, we don't fuck with that, man. We don't fuck with that. <laughs> shit. Y'all can have that. Y'all can have that, man. 
But you know, we take went, it right, you take your dignity away from you. Yeah, man, shit, I don't fuck with it, but you know, we went in the studio, we recorded, and after we made that song, we got to, he, he sent it back to us a couple of days later, I'm like, man, this is what I want to do. You know, yeah, I'm going to yeah. keep making more, just keep on making more, as many as I can, you know, produce out of myself and many songs. And shit, you know, I'm going to be making music as long as I, shit, as long as I live, really. Yeah, I, 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 heard, I, don't, I just don't plan to stop. I heard a lot of your joints, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, you got it on SoundCloud. Yeah. And I heard this yeah, one joint in particular. You got a video out for it now. Oh yeah. Called Garbage. It was oh, it was yeah. real crazy when I seen the name, but it was clever as fuck when I saw it. Yeah. I was like, wow, bro is really thinking. And then when you use the words in the actual song, I was like, he coming at somebody. Yeah. Somebody said something to him that really upset him because the rest of his music is revolutionary and moving forward as far as progressing in his life and yeah, in his man. career. And what he noticed was going on in the real world, but he put that aside to come at somebody. I'm assuming you didn't start it. You didn't start it. They came at you with it. Yeah, somebody took shots at me first, really. Okay. And then I really retaliated. But uh, here's how it all started, man. Um, it all started on Facebook. You know, somebody, one of my partners, he added me in a group message with like, uh, probably like 11, 12 more other rappers and stuff. I didn't see it till I got out of work. My whole, my phone was off. So by the time I turn my phone on, I'm like three hours late in the messages. I'm just getting message after message. So, you know, I start from the top, start scrolling down yeah. and shit. You know, it's I find out it's a uh, rap battle. It's for a rap battle and shit. They talk about the prize of the awards and stuff. You get some video time, yeah. some studio time and all that. And so I'm like, I'm trying to uh, get in. But, you know, they, they filled up. They were filled up for that whole month and shit. So, you know, my, my partner, he made a comment, you know, like my niggas, like Tony Taliban, D Lo Raps, you know, that kid, all y'all niggas really. And shit. And so Say your name specifically. Yeah, yeah, he put us in it. And you know, I will. I will. And shit. So he went he went lying. And so, you know, I guess somebody somebody felt the need to come at me. It's the me and my crew. And shit. They talking shit, you know, don't waste the time, don't waste the rounds, yada yada yada. Oh, and okay. shit, I feel like they he said he said he's a better rapper than me and my whole crew. Uh, you can take the diss, but you, I mean, when, when know, he speaks some unrealistic facts, it, it kind of brushes it. I didn't know who the nigga was till he was talking about me and my crew. But yep. um, anyway, I wasn't tripping about <laughs> none of that. I don't, I don't trip about shit. Like you know, if you, you can talk shit, as long as you bag it up, you can talk all the shit you want. Yeah. Said, as long as you can bag it up. But you know, he try to prove himself. You know, other people saying he trash on there, so he oh, go yeah. up there like try to prove himself. Put a post, put a song up there, and shit. And put about. Three more songs like this trash, is this trash, this, <laughs> what about this, is that trash? You know. He was listening to it, yeah. trying to check him out, see if he was actually as good as he said he was. Yeah, yeah, I, listened, I had heard all them songs. I couldn't play them all throughout and shit because it was trash. Eventually, like, it escalated. It escalated something personal. He's talking about, you know, don't type up nothing that you ain't ready to say in real life. I'm a man, I'm going to say what I mean, I'm going to mean what I say and right. shit. But anyway, you know, it got to the point where I think all the messages got... Uh, reported or some some somebody reported us mm. or something. All of this shit is gone. Yeah, all this shit is gone. Yeah, no I can't. I can't get. We was all finna hop on the same track and really just bombard this nigga. Just <laughs> just bomb this nigga. But you know, I was like, man, it really don't even take all three of us Hell just nah. to get him. Like you know, that's like they're like man, they're like three sharks trying to fight over a, a, a goldfish. Some creel or <laughs> some shit. Nigga. Like, that's too much. That's too much. I was like, man, I go ahead, take him on my silk. Really, this nigga a lightweight. And that's still too much for his say. They like a damn uh, bodybuilder against a baby. Like, cause after I heard this shit, I, after I heard the shit he had, and this point part was, you know, he from Mississippi. He from Jackson. And another and nigga hating on you. Don't want to see you come up. I mean, but it's yeah. in a way, it's kind of good to have a little controversy in the city. You know what I'm saying? Some type of, as far as the music go. As far as the music go. But as far as everybody beating each other up and cut, we all same color. I mean, we're not same yeah. color. We all of the same culture. Let's put it that way. Because yeah. black is not really a color, man. That's some stuff they gave us. But we all love the same culture, man. We all got the same heritage down there. We all grew up poverty ridden Jackson. It's no secret that the white yeah. people used to own it back in the day. Now they moved on to Madison now. We got it. We yeah. had a bunch of corrupted mayors in the past couple, like maybe 15 years. We had a bunch of corrupted mayors, you know. Uh -huh. We got, we had Chuck Way. I don't know what happened to him. I think somebody actually did something to him because he was actually trying to make a change for the city. Yeah. 
then y'all yeah, became really, me. Like, they don't get no fuck about Jason, man. Jason really has been getting smaller and smaller because, you know, out in like Ridgeland, Brandon, all them cities nearby, like they all this shit used to be Jason and shit. And they just really made a whole nother city and Jason just gets smaller and shit. But, you know, I don't feel like he trying to really, um... We got, I feel, I feel we like got Chuck Wade now. We got Chuck Wade Jr. You know, his dad was before y'all, but... And yeah. it was y'all, but now after y'all, but now it's Junior. Junior running the city now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Chuck Wade, the mama Junior. He running the city oh, now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I feel like he gonna so, make a bigger difference. But still, you know, aside from all that, can you explain to me, like, what it, what what was your your main inspiration to music? Like, when you, I hear your flows, I hear your bars, and I hear how you rocking. You know what I'm saying? You got a, a real strong vernacular. Yeah. And I like that, you know what I'm saying? As myself, as an artist, you know, I like... And when I speak as it is, I don't like using the same kind of words, you know what I'm saying? I like mm -hmm. mixing it up, using yes. different words to kind of sum up what I'm trying yeah. to say. When when I hear your flows, I hear kind of New York, and then I hear a little Cali sometimes when you slow it down. And then it's like your punchlines, your punchlines. I'm not going to say you focus yeah. on it, but it seems like it kind of flow natural to you. Yeah. Can you tell yeah. me about that? Who who you pay homage to? Who Who motivated you? To actually have those type of flows and and, Man, and bars and stuff. I mean, I listen to a lot of niggas from New York and Cali. Okay. You know, I don't try to sound like anybody. I develop my own style. Yeah. But uh, I came up listening to a lot of KRS. Like he gave me a lot of wisdom. He's the teacher after all. But he gave me a lot of wisdom just coming up listening to him. And I got to pay homage to my nigga Nas. Man, that nigga, he he the truth. Shit. Really growing up, you know, I knew about, you know, Pac Big, Ice Cube, all them, but you know, I ain't really I ain't really never heard Nas. I ain't never listened to him. Yeah, that was the that was the ill medic, man. I heard it from beginning to end, every song from beginning to end. And shit, after that, like I just kept on listening to his shit. Yeah, I listen to niggas like, you know, they be featuring with him. And I just listen to a lot of underground, a lot of underground artists. You know, yeah. I feel like they are they the ones that you know have the biggest message, really. That's what my fuckers said. And they don't get out, they don't get out a lot because you know the mainstream talks about you know shit that everybody already know, everybody already hear every day. Those the people with the deals and stuff like that who actually are under a contract who yeah. have to rap about what they contract say they need to rap about because they are in. They up under somebody, somebody else over them and in charge of what they do, their material and yeah. stuff like the A and R's and stuff. And I always try to reach a topic, you know, that's probably never been touched or that that gets barely put out there. And shit, you know. Everybody's mind is different and shit. So I try to express shit from my point of view and let people hear hear things from my point of view. And you know, I just like you know, I read books a lot anyway. I read books a lot. I try to I try to learn new things and just, you know, throw them in with my credit. That's right. You you got a message. You actually trying to teach somebody yeah. something, versus tell somebody how much money you got, how flashy you is. I mean, eventually, when you progress in your career, you'll get that yeah. far. You know what I'm saying? As far as what you talking about, you talking about what you living. Like if you buy yeah. a new watch, of course you might say that one time. You know what I'm saying? Or in a couple of raps, especially if you go get you another one or uh -huh. you add something to it. But as yeah. of right now, brothers are the same struggle. We coming up. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. We actually coming up trying to make a difference in our community. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. as far as you go, I respect you as a man and I respect you as an artist. A man first, yeah. then an artist. Because you carry yourself in a manner where you don't demand respect, but you give respect where it should be given back to you. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you ain't got to respect me, but you better not disrespect me. That right, that right. You better not disrespect me. You got to respect me, but don't come to me with the disrespect. Yeah, I feel like he really crossed the line. It said you should never really press a button, you know, unless you know what it does. Because <laughs> shit, you, he just hit the self destruct right there. Like that's the self destruct button he just pressed. Like he ain't know what the fuck. It, what is it? Right in that check, he can't care. Yeah. No. yeah, man. And see, I feel like you know, whenever it comes to, like rap beef, it can always end in either one or two ways. Either you know we gonna squash this shit, you know, be like this shit dead, man. This shit, you know, we just keep the move, move on from that shit, move on from that beef shit. Oh, well, somebody, somebody gonna have to take an ear. Somebody gonna have to take an ear. All right, I got a question for you, yeah. Tony, man. Because yeah. I don't think too many people know. You know, where, where you where you grew up at? Where you from? Man, I'm Mississippi raised, but I wasn't born in Mississippi. I was born in Alabama. Okay. I was born in Alabama. Shout out to Bounce. And then I moved to Mississippi. You know, I wasn't even one yet. I moved straight to Mississippi. 
And I stayed here. I lived, I was raised here until I was 12 years old. I was at my grandmama's house. And you know, we moved to Indiana after I was 12. You know, I went to middle school, finished middle school, and finished high school in Indiana. Came right back. Yeah, came right back. Came right back. Home. I was 17. I was 17 when I came back home. See, I had to come back home. Man, that's where you know all my day one niggas at all uh, man my most of my whole family I moved up there it was for the better you know I got to be I got to meet people who were you know a little more diverse and got to see what life was like outside of Mississippi because everybody I meet in Mississippi who been there their whole lives they want to move out they want to get uh get out and they don't want to look back at all I know that's right you I know Mississippi always gonna be home to me no matter where I go I ain't gonna I might not die in Mississippi I'm always keep on coming back. This is my home. That's right. It's my home. That's what's up, man. Hey, now, due to the fact that you know you graduated from Indiana and now you stay in Mississippi, do you see Mississippi in a different light since you left and came man, back? I do. I do, man. It's been a lot of niggas that you know. I used to fuck with a lot of people down here. You know, some people, you know, they switched up and shit. They just on some funny shit. You know, a lot of my niggas, you know, they stay the same. They're like, they ain't, they ain't really change up on me yeah. and shit. But when I came, when I used to, when I love here, man, Metro used to be the spot, man. Metro was pop. Huh? That was the spot right there. I Metro swear, yeah. I swear, Metro Center Mall, that was the spot. I came back five years later, went to the Metro. That bitch is dead now. That it's dry. shit is empty. It's, it's dry. dry. They it's trying to bring it back. Man, man. It dry now because the police are there. I was like, man, what's going on up here? I'm like, where everybody at? You know, they said, you know, all the white people left. They said, all the white people left, all the money gone. So they ain't got no money to, you know. They took it originally. Yeah, everybody in North Park. That's where it's at now. It's at North Park now. They said, you know, some shit really changed. Some some shit never changed, man. But, so how, I got a question, man. Yeah. Just listen to your, your raps before the, uh, the other track. You know what I'm saying? You, you. You pay attention to what's going on in the culture and what's going on with evolution as it is right yeah. now. We're in the new millennium. We're in the in the two thousands. You know what I'm saying? We're moving forward. Mm. We we are we are quarter almost a quarter into the decade. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I mean, according to the uh, the century. So it's kind of changing a little bit. Stuff shaping. You know what I'm saying? Different mayors they tearing down uh, monuments and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, uh, right. I was watching CNN and uh, I can't remember what state it was, but they took down. It was a, a monument that represented slavery, and they tore it down. I think I heard a little bit about that. I, heard a I can't remember what it was, but it was a statue in some mm -hmm. state, and they had tore it down. How you feel about that? Like, uh, they still got stuff uh, put up to represent slavery, you know what I'm saying? Like, in the state of Mississippi, right. slavery wasn't officially off the books until maybe yeah. five, five, six years ago. Man, I feel like, you know, they doing that shit. They want niggas to forget. They want niggas to forget. You know, it's a memorial. If it's a memorial, why would you take it down? You want niggas to forget about this shit. You know, and just act like it shit never happened. Well, we can't. Like we can't wrong. act like it, it never happened because that brings us to how we are today. You know what I'm saying? We we know that people stripped us of our rights, of our culture, of our native tongue, and our yeah. names, yeah. and they gave us American names. Not gonna say they white man names because we all speak the same tongue. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's just how far you want to go with learning the native tongue. And if you want to go far further than learning your native tongue and learn other people's culture and tongue as well yeah. so you can reach more people and people can understand more about where you come from and how you view the world. You know, perception is everything. So Yeah. I was raised I was raised up learning about my culture at a very young age. Okay. You know, my folks used to always tell me shit like, you know, like when you around the police, you know. You ain't gotta be doing nothing, you know. They gonna look for something. They gonna they gonna want they want a reason to lock you up and throw you in jail. Like you know, I'm too young to understand this, but they always told me this coming up. When I went to school, you know, before I even went to first grade, you know, I was in this school. Uh, it was really like a Black Panther school. They teach you a lot about uh, your Black history and your culture. It was a school. It was called Adiyumbo. Okay. You know? And you know, I think it was like a, a lot of Africans founded it, but um. Yeah, they taught us. A, they taught us a lot of shit, man. They taught us the Black Pledge. We just seen class, watch, you know, Martin Luther King, watch Malcolm X. Oh, all the know. Black Revolutionaries. Yeah, well, all all the people who represented the the culture back in the day. 
Yeah, man. Yeah, we, man, we used to watch all this shit, and they used to teach us that shit. You know, they teach us, you know, math, English, and shit, but that was the main thing they'll teach you. They said, they'll teach us all this shit. You know, go downstairs, they had, you know, everybody, every man in the whole school had to do karate. They said, you know, had to learn how to defend yourself. What? And shit, hell yeah. Everybody, what, everybody, what school is this? Out of Yumbo. What is that? Out of Yumbo, man. It's, it's, what man, state is it in? It's in Mississippi, Jackson, Mississippi. Out of Yumbo. That's in Jackson, Mississippi. It's a high school? Man. Nah, no, nah, it's just uh like elementary to middle school and shit, man. Hey, I don't remember going right. Yo, yo, they used to make us line up every single day from lightest to darkest. On <laughs> our hands saying the black pledge. For Ready? real? Yeah, yeah. Color coordinated. Yeah. Color coordinated. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, like you, you know, I'm, 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 I'm in front of you. I'm in front of you. Let me get in front of you. <laughs> That's cool. I like that. That's man, I remember this shit, man. For real. I used to I used to like going to that school. I went there um Shit, my nigga that I rap with today, like, mm -hmm. shit, he went in that school too. I know him since first grade. Wow, that's, know him since that's first a grade, true day one, you know? huh? Day one, day one, live in the same hood. Day one. And shit, you know. On that note, bro. Make it thin, man. On that note, what can we expect from you? What can what can your fans expect from you in the future as far as yeah. the music go? Like, are you, are you trying to make visual, what I want to say, visual movies with your words or are you trying to pursue your career as an artist in the music or are you trying to go further than the music um right now i'm really just focused on the music but i definitely try to make my words vivid and like lucid and telling a story you know i also like listening to slick rick when he tells his stories and i like the feeling you know I feel like I can see I can see his vision in his words when I'm listening to him. Kind of. I want people to get that same vibe when they listen to me. Kind of hypnotized, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, you can say, I guess you can say that. You can say it. Kind of hypnotized, but I want them to visualize, though. I want them to visualize with their own mind. To at see the what, same see, time. Yeah, yeah, to see what I'm thinking. I say right, writing it is probably one of the, e that's the most fun part for me. That's the or well, the easiest part and the most fun part. That's the part I enjoy. That's the part I love the most, though. I think uh, personally, for from my perspective, I think yeah. that's like the greatest experience for any artist. See, usually when I do something, it's usually from something that I I'm used to, something that I thought of myself, something that's original, something that I experienced, something that I feel in the moment. You know, yeah. sometimes I had to go back. If it's a relevant topic, I had to go back a little bit to actually bring some people up to speed what I meant and yeah. usually sometimes when I tell a story it kind of be chronological order but sometimes I like to do it in shorts where it make you think and have to put the pieces to the puzzle together yeah, yeah, yeah. yourself mm. a lot of songs that I make nowadays is for it's for the youth to think you know older people uh -huh. a lot of older people kind of stuck in their ways but the young the youth they look into music for messages and actually learning from messages I'm not gonna lie to you I seen the Styles P interview yeah. And, you know, he was talking about how he lost his daughter to suicide because it wasn't his daughter originally, but it was his stepdaughter. Uh -huh. You know, so he felt yeah. like if he had been more present, then it would have made a bigger difference. But yeah. his music was always there. So yeah. for the ones, for myself personally, when I grew up, my father was locked up 15 years, bro. So when I needed some confidence or I needed some words of encouragement, I turned to the music. Yeah, and I feel it was a lot of underground artists that that teach you like, nah, don't be in your feelings, fuck your feelings, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Move forward, keep your life moving, yeah, you know. Be, yeah. yeah, be yeah. progressive, you know. I feel, you, I feel you. That's why I like I like to make music and stuff. You know, music helped me in the past. I can say some, you know, somebody else might feel the same way I'm feeling, not know how to, you know, really say it or express it. I want to be the voice, you know, That's the right. voice of the people. You feel me? Okay, one more thing before I go, man. One more thing before we go. Yeah. Now, I vision you five years from now or six years from now being something greater than you could imagine. We never know where our future's going, but we can try to critique and keep a ton of vision on where we want to go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You never know what life is going to take you. In six years, five to six years, what do you see yourself with the music or with your career as far as entertainment goes? You know, I definitely see myself, you know, doing more shows, you know, having more, having albums, having a full album album, and maybe doing features with other big rappers in Mississippi, you know. You know, I used to look up to people like, you know, David, David Banner, 
and Big Crick. Mississippi. And other names, but you know, just to just try to get my name on the map, you know, in Mississippi. Just be one of the um one of the pillars. Cause they, they one of the strong pillars that I see holding yeah. up the name of Mississippi in the South. You see, when you talk about the South, you talk about Mississippi, you know, you got outcasts, you got You got yeah, outcasts, you got uh David Banner, yeah. you got Kamikaze, they was in a group together, him and yeah. David Banner. Who else you got down here? You got a bunch of artists in Mozzie, yeah. Millie Montana, uh, Young Me, Lil Lonnie. He actually putting on for the for the state yeah. in the city. He doing a good job. He actually working real hard. We was just at the gas station and uh, well not the, we was at the corner store and yeah it was a gas station wasn't. It? We was at the gas station. And I seen a female in the car and she was yeah. listening to Lil Lonnie. So you know what I'm saying we got yeah, a bunch yeah. of people in the state that's actually trying to put on but it's taking time for us to progress because the light is shed on all these other states you know uh -huh. so we actually getting our time to come up but it just take artists like me and you to actually bring out the 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 differentiator you know what i'm saying between the actual different artists that we got you yeah. know what i'm saying because we got artists that talk about the drugs and the gang banging that we got in the city and the state and then we got uh -huh. artists that talk about the actual poverty and the actual, I mean, the drugs and stuff, that still represents the poverty and the struggle. But uh -huh. at the same time, we got people Everybody who, got their own way of just saying, it, you know. Yeah, and we look at it from a different perspective. You know, mm -hmm. some people look at it as if, you know, Mississippi, we can come up from, it's no more slavery, so we still trying to get out of that hole from coming from nothing. You know, yeah, we yeah. all come from the dirt, we all come from the mud, so we got to get it and build it up. So in one of my verses, I said, we come from the dirt straight to them stripes straight to them skyscrapers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, as far as they go, you know, we come from nothing trying to be something bigger yeah. than what we are, you know? So, I feel like, man, in five or six years, bro, you're going to be one of the greatest artists I can ever imagine meeting, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sit down with and actually sharing a decent conversation where we actually talking about progressing and our life versus all oh, F that dude or, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying? We not trying to rock with him, you know? You actually... You open to anybody. Yeah, and I really have high expectations for myself. You know, I believe in that concept. You know, shoot for the moon, land upon the stars. But I feel like you know, if you shoot for something like Pluto, you're gonna get you're gonna get further than the moon. You know, just shoot as high as you can. If I try, if I strive to be the greatest rapper alive, you know, I'm gonna definitely have my name established in the game and meet one of my short term goals and stuff. I just gotta see where this takes me and stuff. You know, I was inspired by. Another rapper, an older rapper, um, when I was young, I used to perform and do shows every now and then. A rapper, he told me, he was like, you know, just keep, if you keep on rapping, like, if you just stick with it, and you just don't stop, you just stick with it and take it serious, then you just gonna, you just, you ain't gonna do nothing but keep getting better. You just gonna keep on getting better. And so ever since then, I was like, you know, I can't stop rapping, I can't stop, I can't stop pushing. And so I just gotta keep on moving. I just gotta keep on pushing, and then you know, looking back now, I see that I'm better than I was, and you know, I got the same concept that gave me a lot of inspiration growing up. It's just, but after I already had something in motion, I just keep on, you know, moving on with. That's what's up, man. Hey, man. Yeah. Don Darnell, man. Tony Taliban, man. Yes, you know what I'm saying? We catch the wave over here, boy. It's an all prosper thing, man. One eighty-seven. Death to Society, Tony Taliban, check out my niggas D Lo Raps and Rose. Uh check out check out my nigga V Don. He on he on SoundCloud as well. And shout out to my brother, Slip. <laughs> OG. You know we been with it. You know what it is.